Hello parents and school community members, this is Mr. Moore bringing to you our October edition of our In The Know video newsletter. Uh, obviously we use this as means to front load some important information, dates and announcements to our school community in addition to all the other uh, ways that we communicate with you. So we hope this is helpful for you each and every month. We start as always with our profile of a South Carolina graduate. You see this posted in every classroom as well uh, as in several areas within our school commons areas. Uh, we want to bring to our students and provide world-class knowledge, skills, and life and career characteristics that make them um, ready to graduate from high school, ready to go to college, or ready to join the workforce. Uh, this is part of uh, Transform SC. We talk a lot about this as a school leadership team and with our teachers, and hopefully you see uh, each and every day the way that we provide uh, the knowledge, skills, and life and career characteristics needed for our students to be successful in life. Hopefully you see that on a daily basis with what we provide for our students. Before we go any further, I need to stop for a moment and thank our school community for what was by far and away the best fundraiser that we have ever had. Uh, it was extremely positive and uplifting. More importantly, our students had an incredible time, such a fun time. We raised the most money we've ever raised as a PTSO in a singular a fundraising event. Our Pride Stride Fun Run netted us over $33,000 to be spent uh, directly on our students and our school to beautify and improve our courtyard and garden area. And we really appreciate all the support. We had a lot of parents that came to cheer on their students, also who served during the event. And then obviously our teachers did a great job keeping our students motivated. And again, we really appreciate everyone's involvement and to raise over $33,000 and not sell any sort of wrapping paper or any sort of uh, candy or, or cookies, just to be able to put that money 100% back into our school um, and to support our students was phenomenal. So thanks again to our school community for your support. And we look forward to using that money wisely and efficiently, again, uh, right back to our classrooms and right back to impact our students. Coming up this Thursday, October the 18th from 4 to, excuse me, from 6 to 8 p.m. is our uh, next Powdersville Elementary Skate Night sponsored by PTSO. Our theme for October is wear your favorite costume. We ask that there are no masks. You'll be asked to take your mask off if you do wear one. Admission is just $4. It is from 6 to 8 p.m. at Roller Time Family Skate Center. We always have a great crowd, and we certainly know that uh, this will be no different. So go ahead and mark your calendar for the 18th, 6 to 8 p.m. for our October Skate Night. We want to talk a little bit in this In The Know video newsletter about uh, safety and security. One of the things that our teachers will be doing here in the next couple of weeks is talking to students in each class uh, about what to do in the event that there were to be uh, some sort of violent intruder situation at our school. As a parent, I know that that is something we hope and pray never happens. We go to great lengths as a district and a school to ensure that it doesn't. Uh, but what we do want to do is make sure that we communicate to our students and train our students what to do in the event that there were some sort of intruder situation. So our teachers are trained each and every year uh, on this. We as a district and as a district leadership team uh, attend more training each and every year uh, because we want to improve what we do and what we provide in terms of the safety and security of our students. And so uh, our staff will have another training coming up soon and then you can expect a drill. And based on South Carolina law, we are now required to have two active uh, intruder drills, uh, violent intruder drills, one in the first semester and one in the second. Parents, you should be receiving a letter from the school uh, Thursday. And so we would ask that you check your child's information folder uh, and read that letter carefully. We use the ALICE model for violent intruder training. And you can see there, I won't read everything to you, but we train 
are teachers, and they in turn train and work with students uh, using this model. So it's alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. And it doesn't necessarily go in that sequential order. It's really based on the information that um, teachers uh, are provided, and then they make decisions based on that information. So we'll be having some serious conversations with everyone uh, about what to do in the event that there is a violent intruder situation at our school. Again, I would ask you to look for that letter from the school that details some more information, including uh, when our drill is and, and what we plan to do. Make sure that you read that this Thursday. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Speaking of safety, we will participate, as all the other schools in Anderson School District 1 in the Great Shakeout. It's an earthquake drill. It's Thursday morning, October the 18th, and I'm just providing this for you. This is what your child will um, be trained on. It's the drop, cover, and hold on method for if and when an earthquake were to occur in our area. And so some teachers and students will participate in, in this again on Thursday, October the 18th. Speaking of safety and security, I have a few uh, just bullet points that I think are very important. So if you parents can help us out with these, this would be tremendous. First of all, we ask that you enter the school from the front office only. Uh, this is morning, afternoon, anytime. Uh, please enter through the front office only. Be prepared to show your ID and or answer questions about your purpose for being in the building. During morning drop-off, please park in a parking spot and walk your child to the crosswalk if you choose not to go through our car line. We know that some of you choose to go to our overflow lot, um, but you don't need to just pull up to the crosswalk and let your child out. You need to park and walk them to a spot. Uh, that certainly will help with safety for our students. In the afternoon, and everyone's done a great job with this. Please make sure that your child's uh, name placard is visible in your car in the car line. If you don't have it, please understand that due to safety and concern, we will ask you to park and walk to the front office and then provide your ID so you can pick up your child in the front office. We encourage parents to talk with their children about school safety. Uh, encourage your children that if they have concerns, something that bothers them in relation to safety, uh, to please uh, let us know uh, as a, a, a staff, and then also you can let the front office know. Communication certainly is very important in that regard. And then finally, district-owned iPads are sent home each day to assist students with homework, learning, and communication. However, I would strongly consider that parents set a time limit for use at home, uh, and then obviously not letting students use the devices unless an adult is present in the same room to uh, constantly monitor use. When a child's done with their work, they've completed their assignment, uh, I would even encourage, you know, for students just to turn that iPad in, plug it in, and, and let it sit on the counter until they bring it to school the next day. So thanks for your help uh, with those safety and security concerns. Our book fair is coming up. Our students love the book fair, and they have been excited about this for quite some time. We'll open the book fair Friday, October the 19th, and this will run through October the 30th, which I believe is a Tuesday. Uh, obviously, this money uh, that's raised through the book fair is used to buy more books for our media center. So thanks for supporting our media center and Mrs. Fowler and providing great reading materials for our students for years to come. You can see weekly or every other week progress report folders, uh, the next dates that they will be sent home. We send these home every other Wednesday usually, uh, but we also take into account uh, the calendar and when we have days off and holidays and things like that. One thing you can do, parents, is to ensure that you're signed up in Parent Portal. If you're signed up in Parent Portal, then whether or not you receive your child's weekly progress report folder, you're still gonna have access to real-time grades and attendance. So again, we encourage you to sign up in Parent Portal. All you need to do is contact Ms. Booth at the front office to set that up. And believe it or not, end of the first nine weeks information is here. The official end of the first nine week period is Tuesday, October the 23rd. Report cards will be sent home on Tuesday, October the 30th. 
Parents, it's important to note that there is no conference day in our district calendar, but our teachers are working hard to schedule parent conferences this month and into November. So make sure that you have an opportunity to sit down and meet with your child's teacher about your child's progress. Here are our pride practices. Uh, our guidance counselor, Ms. Lee, does a great job getting into classrooms to discuss each of these practices. Uh, and then our teachers certainly follow through with these. This is part of our house system. And I'll just flip uh, the screen there and let you see our, our 20 pride practices. We have these scrolling in the building as well on our monitors and they're posted in every classroom. This is a common language for our school. And speaking of the house system, it is going strong at Powdersville Elementary School. We're just a week away or so from finding out which house will win our first nine weeks uh, points competition based on our pride practices. Uh, you can see in the picture to the right, we hold our house meetings each month. Uh, in those meetings, we discuss our pride practices, important uh, upcoming events in our school, and, and really meant to energize the school about learning and growing and, and being connected. Uh, and it sure has been fun. We conclude each of our house meetings with our house cheer. So ask your child about how the house system is going and how their house is doing with uh, their points. Our first nine weeks pride practice ceremonies are going to be held soon. And in these ceremonies, we're going to recognize students from each homeroom who exemplify some of these pride practices. So uh, if your child is going to be recognized, you'll be receiving some information soon. We plan to have a pride practice ceremony each nine week period. And last but not least, don't forget to connect with us. We like to communicate. It's one of the reasons I believe that we have such a wonderful uh, and, and strong school is, is we communicate well and our parents and our school community, they support us and they stay connected with us and we couldn't do it without you. So we are uh, involved on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We send out text message updates and email updates. And of course, our teachers are sending out information via Seesaw, uh, as well as uh, those every other week progress report folders. Uh, so we don't want you to be in the dark about anything. So if you have questions, let us know how we can serve you. But obviously, we want you to stay connected with us. And we look forward to a great rest of the month of October. And believe it or not, start to put the finishing touches on this first nine week period. Thanks everyone for your support. Have a wonderful week.